Welcome to my home office. Times are different, which means church has to be different too. I want you to know that everybody at Calvary Church is working hard to have no misses or no missteps in our ministry. We want to continue what Jesus started, and we're thinking creatively and strategically about how to continue that even though we can't meet face to face. I finished reading Deuteronomy the other day, and I was reminded of a verse that highlights a principle that I need to remember, and maybe you need to remember as well. Deuteronomy 29.29 29 says this, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. You know, one of the questions that I've heard numerous times these past couple of weeks, why? Why does God allow this? Why did God allow it? What should we do? What is God thinking? You know, Deuteronomy 29, 29 reminds us that the secret things God has not revealed to us. When that verse was written, Israel was ready to cross the Jordan River into the Promised Land. They knew the obstacles that were ahead, but they didn't know how they were going to overcome them. And Moses said, the secret things belong to God but he revealed things to us so that we know them and do them. So what do we have to focus on? Let's focus on knowing what God has revealed and then doing what God has revealed. That's why we have as our slogan, continue what Jesus started. We know that God revealed that to us and we know that that's what he wants us to do. We know that God calls us to connect with him and to be impacted by him and then in turn to connect and impact others with the gospel. So let's not focus on all the things that God has not revealed. Let's focus on what he has revealed. Let's know those things and let's do those things as well. Well, I want to answer a question that I've heard a few times. How can we make the most of our Calvary Church experience in these times when we can't meet together? Let me give you a couple of suggestions. First of all, attend and invite. Attend our Sunday morning services. Not in person, but online. Gather as a family, watch the service, and discuss it after with, afterward. Tell other people, invite them to watch the service as well. And maybe even have a conversation with them or a little discussion with them after the service is over to see if they understand what the message has been about and what difference uh, the message should make in your life and in their life as well. Worship Arts and, that, and all of its team members continues to work diligently to produce, design, and then record and deploy services that are beneficial and challenging. Please attend and invite. Secondly, connect. Connect to your Calvary ministry, but also connect to other people. I went on our church website the other day and I looked at some of the Calvary kids materials. Calvary Middle School, Calvary High School, and let me just tell you, I was more than impressed. If you haven't gone on our website to see some of those materials, you're missing out on a lot. If you have kids, or if you are a kid, go and avail yourselves to those materials that are there. If you're a middle schooler, look at the TikTok videos, but there are also devotional materials there. If you're a high schooler, look at some of the videos that the leaders are posting. Do, do the devotions that are posted, and let's make this a time of growth rather than a time of dormancy. Thirdly, continue giving even though we're not gathered together. Let me uh, educate you just a little bit. About two-thirds of Calvary's revenue comes from collections during a service. That means that the majority of the money that comes into Calvary Church comes through collections during a service. Well, obviously, since we're not meeting for services, revenue can be severely impacted. So I want to say to you, please avail yourselves to the other giving opportunities. You can go to the website, you can go to the app, and you can give online. You can even um, have those gifts recur so that it comes as a reminder to you and it's kind of automatically done. It's convenient and it's also secure and safe. We at Calvary Church want to meet the accelerating needs around us and we want to make sure that all of our staff members and all of our strategic priorities are continuing to be resourced. It's based on your sacrificial gifts and your generosity that has and continues to make those things possible. 
Firstly, I want to say, let's partner together in prayer. Just a few things that we need to be praying together for. Let's pray for those infected with the virus, those that are working to stop the spread, the first responders on the front lines. Pray for churches seeking to meet the spiritual needs and some physical, spiritual needs of people as well. Pray for individuals that they would be open to the gospel and that Christians would be able to come alongside them and help them understand their need and how Jesus meets that need. Just four simple reminders. Attend and invite. Connect inside and outside. Continue to give and think of how we can pray together. In the near future, you're going to be uh, notified about some specific prayer things that we're thinking of doing. But until then, let's just pray as, as we're reminded and let's look for the opportunities how we can partner and pray together. Hoping to see you all soon at a service, Quaker Town or Souderton.